All right, Filmlet. I said I was never going to talk to you again, but I changed my mind because a few of you have were kind of confused by the ending of the village, and it struck me that usually when I teach the village about 15 minutes before the end of the movie, I will dramatically stop it, and then I will teach you a concept known as the noble lie. So the noble lie was um, started by Aristotle way back, uh, way back before you guys were born. Um, he had this idea because Aristotle was kind of comfortable. He enjoyed having someone wash his feet and feed him grapes and give him massages. So he thought, I don't want to ever lose my status as a nobleman. So he invented this lie. Basically, the lie was that if you were a servant, you were made out of different material than a noble person. So there's no possible way that you could ever become a nobleman. So what this did was it kind of kept the servants in their place so that they were like, oh, I'm not even going to try to rise up because it's impossible. It's physically impossible for me to become noble, to become a king or a president or the head of a corporation. So that's the origins of the noble lie, but I hate to break it to you. We use noble lies all the time still. So we went camping, um, I'd say 10 years ago, maybe, maybe longer. And we were camping next to water. So there was this river that was like within 50 feet of our campsite. My brother was terrified that his young children were going to get up in the night, leave the tent and go fall in the river. So he told them that if they got out of the tent, the ranger would put them in jail. So it's like, uh, it's a lie, but it's a good lie, right? It's keeping his children in place, like where they should be. So that's the heart of the concept in the village. We have this, these families who have um, seen devastation and murder and all kinds of horrible things, and they wanted something better for their kids. So they took them out to this remote area so that they could leave, lead happy lives and leave the world behind, the scary, violent, evil world behind, and to keep them inside the confines of their community, they created a lie that if they left, if they wandered too far, they would be destroyed by these beasts. So. That's the noble lie. So at the end of the movie, um, this whole time we we think that they're living in the 1800s. And then we see the park ranger and we see the modern technology. And we're like, what's going on, <laughs> right? So then we see that they've created this world inside of the world. And um, for me, <clears throat> one of the main themes is that you you, people have a way of finding violence, right? Um, so you can create this perfect community, um, but people are still going to cheat. They're still going to lie. They're still going to have murderous intent. They're still going to be greed and hatred and sadness and heartbreak. So um, I'm not saying that we need those things in the world, but um, sometimes uh, we can't escape certain realities. So if you have other questions about the film, um, there are definitely no beasts. Uh, you know, there were legends of the beasts, but we've, you know, we've got heard of Sasquatch too. That doesn't make it all right for me to tell my kids that Sasquatch exists to keep them in line. <laughs> so... Um, so, oh, somebody asked me if Lucius 
dies or if he lives. And since I'm a positive, happy person, I believe that Lucius definitely lives and, um, and she's a hero at the end of the film. So there you have it. If you have any other questions, hit me up on the old email account. And seniors, I'll see you in a few weeks as you walk by proudly in your drive-by graduation. And everyone else, I'll see you next year.